Ringo TV reactions back again with another one. Let's get down to business. You already don't know what it is. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. We're talking about Kirk Franklin begging for prayer. I personally haven't said anything over the last week and a half. I wanted to respect uh, the family and, and so many people that are impacted by this moment. I'm in the studio right now and working on my next album and it is extremely empty here because I don't have my brother Sean Martin Sean Martin has done albums with me now it's been an intricate part of my music for over 20 years and my brother is fighting for his life right now he is Monica's husband. He is Harlem's father. He is arguably one of the greatest musicians in the world. And I miss him and I need him. I know I'm being selfish because there are so many people who he continues to impact their life. But I don't have my bro tonight. And I need him to fight. So I'm asking all of you, please say a prayer tonight for Sean Martin. I need Sean to fight. Harlem needs him to fight. Monica needs him to fight. Music needs him to fight and I'm believing that heaven's going to hear y'all's prayers I'm believing pray pray for Sean Martin I miss my brother I you see ladies and gentlemen there's a problem in uh the Christian religion where they really don't have no confidence towards God. You can tell that they really don't have confidence because they come on social media to tell you to pray for them, to pray for somebody else. Now, Kirk Franklin is supposed to be a Christian gospel singer. They claim they have this uh this anointing that can usher in the spirit of god but for some odd reason when it comes to sickness disease they need for you to pray for somebody else in order for them to get well well where is kirk franklin's anointing where's the power of God where is it where is the presence of God because when he's doing music you know he's out there twerking on stage there's a video clip that's circulating of him twerking on stage where's the anointing when that's happening and why come online telling other people to pray for some guy they don't even know when they got their own problems. Now think about this fam. You got your own issues that's going on in your house. Your own issues you, you have going on in your life. Right? And you're going to stop everything you're doing. To go pray for some guy you don't even know. Because Kirk Franklin said to do it. Why Kirk Franklin prayer didn't reach heaven? Why Kirk Franklin's family and friends and the church why they're not praying for the uh the guy why not where's the power of god where is it whatever whatever happened to teaching these people how to eat proper so that they can have good health whatever happened to that see in the christian church they don't teach you to eat properly they teach you to eat shrimp lobster swine you know what I mean? Ham sandwiches, pork chop, you know, 
drinking all day, acting a fool. They don't they don't teach you the dietary laws. They just kind of just eat what they want because they say all you got to do is pray in Jesus name. Pray over your food. Doesn't matter what it is. You know what I mean? It could be H. I mean, S-H-I-T. And as long as you pray over it, it'll taste good. That's what they believe in the Christian church. You just have to pray over whatever poison is in your plate and you're good to go. Well, if it's that guy's time to go, he gots to go. There's nothing that you can do about it. You know, being all sad and discouraged and talking about, well, you know, my brother not here. I need him in the studio music. You sound rather selfish to me. He even said that he's selfish. I mean, who does this type of stuff? I mean, if Kirk Franklin got to come online begging for prayers, then the church have no power. That mean that the religion of Christianity is a griff because they always talk about they have the healing power, the healing anointing, um, the presence of God. But where is the presence of God for Kirk Franklin, I mean, with all the music that he does that he claim is anointed by God, shouldn't he just release the power of God? Where is it? Where is the power of Jesus? Remember, in the Christian church, they tell you that in the name of Jesus, the demons are going to tremble. So why Kirk need you to pray? Why can't he just do it himself? That's like, that's like a child fell in the water and the child is drowning. Kirk is standing right there. Rather than him jump in and save the child, he go live telling everybody else to come on down by the river so that you can all pray to save the child. Rather than him just jumping in there and just Get the child out of the water. He's not jumping in. You know why? Because he's scared. He's scared he's going to drown. Why? Because he don't know how to swim. You see that? See, he don't know how to swim. That's why he feared jumping in the water. See, I'm giving you a clear example of exactly how it works. They're scared to jump in the water. See, Kirk Franklin don't have a relationship with God. So his prayers have no power. There's no power in his prayer. If there were, all he had to do is just say the prayer and, and it will avail if much, just like the scripture says. The Bible says the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So if Kirk Franklin is a righteous man that served God and keep the commandments, then surely his prayers will move mountains, right? But it's not. None of the prayers are moving anything. This is why in the Christian church, everybody's sick. If you don't notice that inside the Christian church, everybody's sick, unhealthy, overweight, mad disease, diabetes, all sorts of problems. A lot of problems is in them churches, fam. You would think that in the Christian church, everybody will be healed, prospering and in good health. But it's not that way. Why? Because there's no power in the church. There's no power in these churches, fam. You know, think about this. If the Christian pastor, right, have the power to lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. Then why we don't see Christian pastors in every hospital healing the sick? Why they not doing it? Why they not doing it, fam? I don't understand this, you know? Like why you're not in the hospitals healing the sick, doing what you gotta do? You says it says in the Bible that, you know, if you lay hands on the sick and pray that they'll be healed. That's what it says in the scriptures. But in the Christian church, for whatever reason, it's like they don't have no power. And that's why he's begging for prayers now. You see. Begging for prayers. That's because he have no confidence towards God. Just like a lot of you. Don't move too much. We won't know it's you. But a lot of you are the same way. 
You love calling other people, telling them to pray for you. Why don't you pray for yourself? Why don't you pray for yourself? See, the reason why you ask others to pray for you because you think they got a better relationship with God than you. So you figure, hey, if they could pray for me, God will definitely hear their prayers because I know that's a, they're a good person. So God definitely favors them. But my prayer, oh, God is not going to hear me. I know God is definitely not listening to me. Well, if God is definitely not going to listen to you, why would he listen to their prayers for you? It makes no sense. You know? If, if you don't have no confidence towards the most high to answer your prayers, what makes you think that if I pray for you, it's going to work? He's not going to take the prayer either way because it's for you. You're wicked. You know? That's just the way it goes. You can't send somebody else to sign for you. If you go to the bank and you got to do a transaction, you're the one that got to go to the bank. Oh, man, let me say that again, man. If you, listen, if you got to make a transaction financially, you cannot ask people online to go to the bank to sign for you. No, you got to come on down to that bank. They need you in person. You understand? Yeah, you remember Kirk Franklin back in the day wearing the pink lipstick? We made videos about that back in the day. You know what I mean? You got to go down to the bank yourself to sign your signature. You can't send somebody else to do that. Nope. No matter how much you tell people to go down to the bank and sign for you, they can't do that. You know that. Well, it's the same way with prayer. You know, a lot of people be having this misconception that you could just go to other people asking them to pray for you. No, pray for your damn self, bro. Serious. Just being honest, fam. Pray for yourself. You going through sickness and problems? Pray for yourself. You know, matter of fact, the elders of the church should be able to come and pray for you, if anything. Why Kirk Franklin didn't call for the elders of the church? Where are the elders at? Where are the elders? Scripture talks about the elders in the church coming and praying. Why are they not praying? Why are they not laying hands? Why, why the Christian church, they talk all this stuff, man, about power of God. We're in the presence of the Lord. We could feel his presence in the air. Okay, why that presence is not healing nobody? Why? I'm just asking questions. I'm trying to figure this out. You know? Didn't, didn't Jesus say that because I go to my father, you know, greater works shall you do in my name. You shall cast out devils. Okay, Kurt, you a Christian, right? Well, hey, go to the hospital, wherever you got to go to see your friend and uh, cast out the devils. You know? I mean, come on now. Just do it. Go ahead and do it. You know? But see, he's sitting there heartbroken because he really need the guy to finish his music. He really don't care about the guy. It's just that the guy is one that helps with the music production. So if that guy is no longer there, he's not going to be able to do the music the way he needs to. Because he's selfish. You know what I mean? He's only thinking about himself and his own personal gain. You know, that's just the way it is. And in, in, in the music business, in the church, this is what they do. You know. 200 people in the building, only 57 likes. This just goes to show that I don't even know why people watch my videos. I really don't. I just don't get it. It's like maybe you just don't got nothing to do. Maybe you don't know how to read. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you just don't know that on your phone you have a like button that you're supposed to press every time you come to the stream. But it's like people just don't get it. I got to keep telling people click the damn like button, fam. You wondering why it's only 200 people here? It's because you don't click the like button. That's why. I be telling people all the time. The way YouTube works is you click the damn like button, right? The algorithm now says, okay, we got 200 people viewing. 
all of them click the like button. Okay, let's push the video now further in the algorithm so that more notifications can go out and more people can come by. That's the reason why nobody ain't watching the streams. Because the people that are viewing the streams, they don't support the work. This is why we only have low numbers when we go live. Because of you. You're responsible for that. So this is why the platform cannot reach the people. We can't get the truth out there. We can't help save lives. We can't do nothing. Because the people that come to the platform, they're haters. They like to listen to me. They'll sit there and listen to me for hours and hours. They'll watch all the videos, but they'll not support the shows by clicking the, land, the, the like button. Some as simple as clicking the like button. Because this, look, when you sign up to Netflix, you make them millions of dollars. You know that? Do you know that when you sign up for Netflix, you make them rich? You don't do that for me. Of course not. Because I'm black. I mean, why would you want to make me rich? Why would you want to do that? But you'll make the white man rich. <laughs> Isn't this amazing how black people, because we know the majority of the people that's watching my content is so-called black, right? They, they don't have no problem going to McDonald's every day, making McDonald's rich. They don't mind getting their Amazon Prime. They don't mind Netflix. They don't mind going here and there and Uber Eats and all this door dashing and all this other stuff. You make everybody else very successful. You do a great job. But those people offer you nothing for your mind. But when it comes to someone sharing commentary and criticism about various different stories, for some reason, you don't feel it's necessary that you have a part. It's, it's a weird phenomenon. It's like you like listening to me when I talk, but you don't want to see me successful. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> they, they don't have a problem making everybody else successful, but when it comes to supporting the content, they like, uh-uh, I don't want you to be successful. I like listening to you. I like using all of your information. I like hearing all your information. You get me through my work hour, my work shifts. But guess what? I don't want you to be successful at all because you're black. Of course not. And this is why Satan is so successful with his unbelievers in the religion of Christianity. Because you make people like Kirk Franklin millionaires. That's what you do. Y'all love helping the devil. Did you not know that Kirk Franklin worshiped the devil? But you, but you love him. He's begging for prayers. Shouldn't he be following Jesus? Shouldn't Jesus be his prayer? Shouldn't he be in secret praying? Didn't the Bible says to go in your prayer closet and pray to your heavenly father? Didn't the scripture says, um, what you call it, um, to go in the secret place and the father who see in secret will reward openly, you know? And the Bible says, our father, which art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Why Kirk Franklin ain't saying that? I wonder why. I wonder why Kirk Franklin ain't reciting the scriptures. Oh, I know. He don't know them. That's right, right? Yeah, he don't know the scriptures. That's why. And he know he's in sin. That's why he can't go to God. He knows that. See, Kirk Franklin is living the alternative. This is something a lot of people don't know. We talked about this many years ago. Kirk Franklin is definitely one that is in sin secretly. Uh, at the same time, he have to hide it. Now, don't let, don't be fooled by if you see him with a woman or he says he's married or any of that stuff. None of that stuff even makes sense, fam. Those are beards, man. You got to know the difference. Let's get back to the tapes. Personally, I haven't said anything over the last week and a half. Wanting to respect uh, the family and, and so many people that are impacted by this moment. I'm in the studio 
right now and working on my next album. Really? So you're working on your next album, promoting your album when your friend is supposed to be in a hospital dying. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. It's crazy. It's crazy, fam. Oh, boy. We have a religious person in the building. Here we go. Look at a religious person in the building. He who is without sin cast the first stone. Why are you here? <laughs> Isn't this amazing? Kirk Franklin promotes that he is working on a new album while his friend is dying. Ain't that amazing? This is crazy. Uh, James says, you must be perfect. That's what James said. <laughs> James, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Why exactly are you subscribed to my channel? <laughs> Why exactly are you subscribed to my channel? Isn't it crazy how... You talk about Kirk Franklin and you have the fanboys show up about he who is without sin. Let him cast the first stone. Uh, because you used to spit truth. Used to. <laughs> notice, notice the comment, ladies and gentlemen, the, the hypocrisy. The person says, uh, because you used to spit truth. What do you mean by used to? <laughs> so, so if I used to. When did that stop? <laughs> Clickbait? He's begging for prayers, dummy. <laughs> oh, boy, man. Why is this person here, fam? This doesn't even make any sense. Like, seriously, fam. The person said that uh, I used to, that they're subscribed because I used to spit truth. Do you see, do you see the madness that I got to deal with? that I used to, so I don't, I don't speak truth no more. <laughs> are you, are you seeing the madness that we get fam? Are you seeing what's going on? This is crazy. The person said that they were subscribed because I used to spit truth, which imply that I don't anymore. Notice I'm not speaking truth when I'm talking about one of their saviors, which is Kirk Franklin. Do you see how they love to defend these charlatans? Do you, do you not see that? The man is begging people for prayers. Who does that? Fam, I ain't coming to none of you for no prayers. That's the last thing I would do, fam. Prayers? I don't need nobody praying for me, bro. Because I don't know what spirits you carrying. I don't know who you praying to. I don't know what God you serving. So I don't want nobody praying for me, fam. Pray for myself. These are facts. I go to the most high myself. If the most high can't hear me, fam, then, hey, it is what it is at this point. I'm just being honest. Listen, if the most high cannot hear my prayer, if I'm praying to him, then that means he ain't listening to me. Period. So I don't need for you to go to God on my behalf. If he ain't hearing me, then that means he not feeling me, bro. That means he's basically saying, look, I'm ignoring you. You know, because people be carrying demons, bro. You can't just have anybody praying for you. Kirk, come online begging everybody else for prayers rather than going to Jesus himself. He supposed to go to Jesus. Why he telling us for why he's telling us to pray for some other guy? That's begging. What are you begging for prayers? What are you soliciting prayers for? If you're a Christian and you claim you're anointed, you know, what he's thinking about is himself. He's not thinking about the guy. He need him in the studio. That's what he needs, fam. Listen. And it is extremely empty here. Because I don't have my brother, Sean Martin. So he don't got Sean Martin to work in the studio. 
That's his focus, y'all. He don't care about Sean Martin. He care about the fact that he's able to help him with the album. In other words, if Sean Martin ain't there to mix the, the music and play the music or whatever the case is, then he's not going to be able to get the album done. If you look at his face, that's what the main game is about. He need him there to help him with the album. Sean Martin has done albums with me now. It's been an intricate part of my music for over 20 years. He's supposed to be some sort of pastor, musician, whatever the case is. But uh, notice how he said the guy was with him for about 20 years working with the music and so on and so forth. But uh, where's the power of God? Where's Jesus? You know, I'm trying to figure this out, man. I'm trying to figure out why Kirk Franklin don't got the spirit of the most high to lay hands on the sick. Why? Why don't he go to the hospital and lay hands on the sick so that they can recover like the Bible says? I mean, since they talk about the anointing and God's healing power. Then go to the hospital and lay hands. Why is it that Jesus don't work for Christians when they need him? Have you ever noticed that? Why is it that Jesus never come through for the Christian that is in Hollyweird? The Christians that are in the industry. Why Jesus never come through to help them when they're sick? But when they have church services, right, they be having all these people they laying hands on and they be falling on the floor and talking about they falling out under the power of God. Why? Why in the church when they're having a regular church service, the healing power of God is in church, allegedly, right? But when somebody is really sick in the real world, th none of them have power. Why is that? You see that? But again, I'm not speaking the truth, right? I'm, I'm just lying. You know? But that's what it is, man. This is crazy, man. This is really, really crazy, fam. Uh, let's see what we got, man. Do we have any more trolls in the building, man? Let me see if we got any more trolls. Uh, da, 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 da. Somebody said, you begging for likes. Begging for likes? Nah. You got to go, fam. Bye-bye. <laughs> you see, you know who are the people who are sent by the devil, right? I don't need prayers. Do you understand? Prayers. See, I cannot click the like button for you, dummy. <laughs> Kirk Franklin is begging for prayers. That's totally different. Do you see the difference here? He is trying to get you to pray to get somebody else's healing. Why don't he go and pray for that person. You cannot compare someone begging for prayers for someone asking people to click the damn like button. <laughs> I'm telling you, fam, we live in a crazy world, man. Seriously. I don't even look, I don't even know why these people are here. You could tell all of these people are followers of Kirk Franklin. They love Kirk Franklin, fam. You know? This, this is crazy. These people don't follow Jesus, man. Why don't Kirk Franklin go to the hospital, lay hands like the Bible says, so that he can recover? See, I cannot lay hands on you and all my likes get to 293. The reason why the majority of people are not clicking the likes is because we have demons that are watching as well. As you can see, demons entered the chat room to tell me that I'm begging for likes. That's because those people don't really support the work. It's a big difference, fam. You have a lot of people that they, they come to the platform just to waste their time. They don't got nothing better to do. So they're listening to me to either troll, talk crap. They're not really supporting the work that I do. You know, I'm, I'm giving you very good understanding while we break this video down. If Kirk Franklin is supposed to be a Christian that is 
anointed, if he have anointed music, because, you know, the Christians, they love to say that their music is anointed. Right. So if their music is anointed, then shouldn't they have the power to heal the sick? Think about it. Shouldn't they have the power to heal the sick? Why can't Kirk Franklin turn off the live stream, right? Jump in his, in his luxury car, go to the hospital, lay hands on the sick, like the Bible says, and pray for them to recover. Why can't Kirk Franklin do that? Come on. Why can't he do it? I tell you why, because there is no power in his church. They really don't got no power. They serve Satan. You understand? You ain't see the video of Kirk Franklin twerking on stage. Come on, fam. Kirk Franklin was in a video twerking. We're going to have to find that video another time and, and do a reaction to that. But Kirk Franklin was twerking on stage, shaking his behind. And I'm trying to figure out wh which part of the anointing is that. <laughs> you know? Oh, really? He partied with P. Diddy? Well, you already done know what kind of parties they have. <laughs> right? It is what it is, man. See, a lot of people, right, they hate God. A lot of you in the clouds that refuse to click the like button, you hate God. Yes. You don't like God. Why? Because you serve Satan. Just admit it. Just admit it, fam. You hate God. You love the devil. You love the devil's music. You love the devil's movies. You love the devil's world. You love everything about Satan. That's why you defend people like Kirk Franklin. Because it's like you love entertaining sin. This is crazy, man. It's, it's like... Why people hate truth so much, but they like listening to it. You ever notice that people will come over here listening to me all day, but they hate God. They hate the Bible. They hate men of truth, but they love listening to me. I mean, like, that's crazy. You know? And see, this is why I always tell you that I roll solo. And when it comes to people, I only rock with people that rock with me. Not everybody that view my platform really are supporters. Um, you see like how we have 273 people. Um, the 273 are not people that really rock with me. Um, you got people that are viewing that worship satan too you got trolls we had a couple of trolls that came in um because they hate the truth they they defend in kirk franklin they said he who is without sin cast the first stone that's what that's what uh christians do christians love to say that and then they be the same one that's watching porn at this time of the night <laughs> i'm serious fam most of those very same people that be like, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. They be having the lotion, the rags, and the porn, everything set up. <laughs> and be talking all that religious stuff. Because they want to sound deep. And in other words, anytime you hold their, their saviors and their idols accountable, they act religious. You know? And it's crazy, man, but this is how it be. You can't speak truth because people always try to act like 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 you the bad guy for speaking truth. It's crazy, man. But this is how it be. This is how it be. And I'm like, look, fam, I got much love for people. That's why I spend the time to teach and spit game, spit truth, because it's in me to teach. You know, you may not like the tone at times. You may feel some type of way, but that's what that's what makes it good for you. 
uh, you know, back in the days when I was a boy, I was on the uh, baseball team. I was on the baseball team, the basketball team. I didn't really like playing football because you get injured real quick. Back then, I was very skinny. But baseball was my favorite sport back in the day. So when I was on the baseball team, I can recall when I joined because, you know, I went to a couple of games. I always liked the games. And then again, in the parks, they would have like a lot of, uh, I guess, different colleges and schools would come to the park and they would play like, you know, real baseball games like the major leagues. Right. And I used to be there on the side because it was like right in the neighborhood. We had the parks and there was these big games there every weekend. I loved that stuff. And I remember when they had like a tryout for like a kid's baseball um, team and whatnot, we had a particular coach. And I can recall the coach, the coach was balanced. The coach would, he would, he would properly teach you, but there have been times the coach was rough in terms of his tone towards the players. And we were just kids, you know, and the coach would flip out when we didn't do things the right way and we had to be tough. What, what I enjoyed about the sport is the coach was like a father figure to us. That's what I enjoyed a lot about the game. Not just the fact that we played the game, but the coach. The coach was teaching life lessons even while coaching. Like he would flip out and then he would call you to the side and be like, look. Um, you got to do it right. You're doing it wrong. And he would show you. He'd be like, get back up there. Let me show you how to do it. This is how you swing. This is how you pitch. This is how you run. When you slide to the base, this is what you do. And he would school you and show you how to do it. And then it's like you would get rewarded if you did everything right. And if you didn't do it right and you were acting up, you would have to run around the whole baseball field like, you know, 10 times. You know what I mean? Or you had to do some, some sort of workout as punishment. But we enjoyed it. You get what I'm saying? It, it wasn't always easy. You know what I mean? It was difficult at times, but it made us stronger. It made us mature. And that's how it is when someone teaches the truth. Teaching the truth is going to sting at times. It's not going to be comfortable. Right. You're going to get offended, too. But it's the truth. You can't argue against the truth. If Kirk Franklin is supposed to be a Christian, he's supposed to know God. He's supposed to. I'm never coming to none of you for no prayers. That's the last thing I would do. Prayers. I got to talk to God myself, fam. If he can't hear me. By myself. Then that means he don't rock with me, bro. It's just that simple. Do you know that scripture in the Bible where the Most High says certain people he's going to not um, listen to? In other words, you can pray to him, but if you wicked and evil, he's not going to hear your prayers. Your, your prayers are going to be hindered. It's in the scriptures. So when you look at Kirk Franklin's face, do he look like he's like he has confidence? Do he look like he have confidence towards God? Of course not. He don't have no confidence towards God. He's worried. He, that means he have no confidence. When a church is truly powerful, when a church is truly has the presence and the anointing of God, it's because the people in the church are holy. It's the only way. The only way God is going to visit that church or a church is the people got to be holy. Or you got to be holy. You understand? Because if you're not holy, the Most High not going to hear your prayers. He's not. I know you, you probably believe that if you ask other people for prayers, it's going to work faster. Your delivery is not going not gonna to work faster, fam. Let me tell you something, fam. If I'm waiting on an order from FedEx to be shipped out and delivered, I could call FedEx every day. And scream and holler and say, I want my package delivered faster. You can make 30 people call for you. It's not going to make the package get delivered any faster. 
because the package is in transit. All it takes is one phone call. You don't got to keep harassing the company about your package. Check your tracking number. What it says, it says it's in, tra in, tra in transit. Okay, then, cool. It's on its way. Try and rush it is not going to happen. You can't rush the hand of God. If God want to heal that man, then he's going to be healed. If it's the will of God for that man to be alive in this time, then God is going to make him, you know, be well. It's just that simple. Look, fam, I recognized a long time ago that we're not going to live forever. We may want to, but I don't know the day nor the hour that I'm going to depart the land of the living. I just don't know the day nor the hour. That's why I'm trying to make the most of my time by communicating with you. And this is why I talk with such urgency, because I don't know the day nor the hour. I could eat super healthy. I could work out every day. I could pray. I could treat others right. And yet my day and hour may come before I thought it was going to come. This is why the Bible says to redeem the time while it's at hand, because you don't know. You understand? If God is rocking with you, you're going to be good to go. You understand? That's all that matters. So what I'm trying to figure out is if, if Kirk is really, truly a man of God and he have the power in his music, because you believe that his music is from God. You believe that when Kirk is doing gospel music and all this other stuff, because he's now mainstream, like he's not really, he's more of a secular Christian artist now. If you really believe that that music is from God, then why Kirk don't got the power to heal his friend? Since he has a music ministry from Jesus. And my brother is fighting for his life right now. Why is he fighting for his life right now? Why, if he's a Christian? Why is he fighting for his life if he's a Christian and he's obeying God? Why would he be fighting for his life? Come on now. If he's a Christian, if he believe in the Bible and he's keeping the commandments, why is he fighting for his life? What is his diet like? What do he eat on a daily, daily basis? How is he living? Why would God allow him to suffer in that situation? Because again, when it's your day and hour, there's nothing you can do about it. You understand? Because we do a lot of damage to our bodies and then we want God to heal us. It don't work like that, fam. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I tell people all the time, hit the gym, get your health and fitness in order. Stop eating crab, bacon, uh, pork chops, shrimp, lobster, a bunch of filth, drinking soda all day, never drinking water, only getting one hour of sleep. Uh, you know, just doing a bunch of mess and then you expecting to have a healthy life. No, it's not going to work like that. Your body is a machine. Just like your car needs service, just like you need uh, a tune-up. Everything in life has maintenance that needs to be done. For example, a lot of you ladies, you love to have maintenance on your hair. You spend all your money on your hair, only your hair, but you don't spend your money on your body in terms of the internal parts. You don't invest in your kidneys. You don't invest in your liver. You don't invest in your heart. You don't invest in your lungs. You don't do anything for your health. And the same thing goes for you guys. You'll spend all your money on your car, all your money on your rims. But when it comes to your health and your fitness, you don't invest no money. And then when you come down with a sickness and disease, now you crying out for Jesus to save you. You understand? When you could have saved yourself by eating properly. Again, if you're viewing the stream right now, when you're done, go to my community section on the channel, the community section, and look at the kind of foods that I eat on a daily basis. That's what I eat every single day. 
You know what I'm saying? Every day, every single day, because I understand that if I don't eat properly, then I'm going to die. Just, it's just how simple it is, fam. There's no other way around it. If you don't eat right, you're going to die. Sickness and disease, number one, comes in due to poor nutrition. Not only poor nutrition, sin. That's right. Sin can bring about poor health. Stress can bring about poor health. Let me tell you something. You can eat good all the time, but if you're stressed out, your body will get sick. Your body will get sick if you're stressed out. So we bring about all of the damage that is done to our bodies. So if you want to live long, you got to maintain your, your vessel. You know? It's sad. You, you eat all this mess all your life, and then when you're sick, you cry in the Jesus. How about repenting? Stop eating swine. Stop eating crab legs. Because I know a lot of y'all out there, y'all still eat that mess. Imagine you eating a shrimp. You know what shrimp is? Shrimp is a cockroach for the ocean. You're, you're literally eating the cousin of a water bug. That's what you're eating. Lobster, crab, those are insects of the ocean. Scavengers, they eat the poop, the trash. You eat in a pig that eats its own kids, that eats its own feces. It'll eat anything. They're scavengers. They're filthy. But you eat them. Bible don't say to eat them, but in the Christian church now, they taught you that you could eat anything you want. All you got to do is pray over it. <laughs> That's a lie. The Bible don't tell you to do that. No. The, the Most High gave us dietary laws. That's why we dying, because we violate the dietary laws. Look, ladies and gentlemen, in every state you live in, there are laws that you have to follow, right or wrong. Right or wrong. You may not agree with all the laws, but you know that if you violate them, there are consequences. Well, same thing with the most high. Whether you believe in God or not, whether you're an atheist or believe in another religion, it doesn't really matter. There are laws that govern this world and the dietary laws govern the body. If you violate them and you're eating things that the body is not meant to eat, you're going to break down your system. The human body is designed to heal itself. The human body is designed to cure whatever's going on with your body. If your body is in an alkaline state, there is no way for you to get sick. Do you know that? Imagine eating nothing but fresh vegetables every day. Fresh fruits every day. Get into proper vitamins, nutrition, amino acids, proteins every single day. And avoiding all the toxic artery clogging, blood vessel clogging foods. Do you know most of you may be suffering from clogged blood circulation and you don't even realize that you got many problems developing right now in your body because you refuse to take care of your health. You might feel good right now, but uh, something's brewing. You don't want to wait to when that happened. That's why I try to tell people, fam, you, you, you focusing on making money. I get it. We all got to make money to survive, take care of our families. But the greatest thing of all, man, is health. How many of you are happy when you're sick? How many of you are happy when you're in pain? That's not a good thing. Matter of fact, I would go as far to say, whenever any of you were sick, had the flu, you know what I mean? A stomach virus, headaches, you were in pain. I have a question for you. Were you thinking about money? <laughs> Why? 
Were you thinking about money? Of course not. Your money was not even on your mind. The only thing you were concerned with is I got to get well. I got to get well. I remember about, let me see, I forgot what year it was, but I know it was probably about three, I think about four or five years back. I remember I crashed on one of my scooters and messed up my ribs, right? And I was out of work for about three weeks, four weeks, somewhere around there to heal up. Man, I tell you, the pain. I don't, my ribs was not broken. I thought they were. They were not broken. I, I must have had sprained or there was something. Definitely, I had injured myself badly. Right? And I couldn't breathe. I couldn't sit up. Pain. I'm talking about pain. If any of you ever messed up your ribs, um, you know what I'm talking about. Somebody put strain. Yeah. The pain was excruciating and you can't breathe. And in the healing process, like let's say somebody tell a joke and you start laughing. It hurts when you laugh. It's not a game. All that time, I wasn't thinking about no money. I'm thinking about getting well. You know what I'm saying? And I was only riding about 20 miles per hour. What happened was I fishtail on my scooter. You know, like those lines. Um, This happened on a basketball court. You know, like how basketball courts be painted. You know, like how it's painted like yellow, blue. Well, when that paint is wet, it's very slippery. And I remember a woman was walking by and I was riding and I pressed my brakes fast because she kind of walked. I thought she was walking in front of me, but she didn't. I pressed my brakes and I fishtail. And all I remember it was slow motion. And I hit that floor. Boom. I didn't have on my protection. I had on my helmet, the full face helmet. But I didn't have on a breastplate. I didn't have on nothing. No elbow pads, nothing. And I fell and the impact was right on my chest area. By my ribs on the side. Boom. Man. I didn't call nobody to pray for me. I got up. Was in pain. The adrenaline was rushing. But what's crazy is when I got up, I, I didn't really feel the pain. I felt the pain the next day. That's when I felt the pain, because if I can recall, I still went to work. My scooter that I was riding, the throttle broke right off. The, the, the steering column was bent. So I had to go upstairs, bring the scooter up. But I, have, I had about four scooters. So I just grabbed another one of my scooters and went to work with a tore up shirt, bleeding. And I went to work. Clocked in a little late, told my supervisor, hey, I had an accident. He was like, okay, you're excused. And uh, my coworker, which was a female, she was like, what happened to you? You was in a fight or something? I was like, nah, I crashed. She was like, why you come to work? And it was on the eve of my birthday. <laughs> That's right. If, if those of you who watch my birthday video, you know that ever since my mom passed away on, on all my birthdays, I always play her voicemail recording of, of singing me happy birthday. If you notice in that that uh, audio, she you can hear her tell me uh, to rest, to get well, to uh, pray and all that other stuff because that's when I had that accident. It was a messy accident. I was really hurt. So when I came back home from work and I got up the next morning, that's when I was in excruciating pain. I thought I was dying, bro. Seriously, I never had nothing like that happen. And when I got checked out, they were like, you know, you messed up your ribs. You're going to have to stay out of work and don't do nothing for about three, four weeks to heal up. I didn't ask nobody for no prayer. 
You know what I'm saying? I didn't come online and, and keep them. Keep in mind, I was on YouTube. And probably I don't even recall telling anybody nothing. See what I'm saying? I don't even recall telling anybody, any anyone. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't recall. But if, if you notice, if I did tell anybody, I never asked for no prayer. You understand? Because I made my decision. I crashed. And now if the most high want me to finish his mission, he's going to have to sustain my life. And that's how I feel about it. If it's not your time to go, it's not your time to go. But at the same time, we got to also do our part in sustaining our life by exercising, eating the right foods, um, praying to the most high for health, uh, wisdom, guidance, safety. I'm sure many of you in the chat escaped death many times. I'm pretty sure some of you probably got into a car accident and you knew you were supposed to die. But for some reason, you're still alive. You know? Yeah, when you are... Uh, when you mess up your ribs, man, breathing is difficult. It's difficult to breathe. And it feels really messed up, yo. I, I don't wish that on nobody, man. That's why when you see me do my scooter videos, I'm fully geared up because I learned my lesson. Right after that day, I put an order in for all my gear. I don't ride without my gear, bro. I be seeing people on scooters riding with no helmet. I'm like, bro, one time I, I flew down... This one dude, he was speeding in the street, fam, speeding like 40 miles per hour with no helmet, no gear, nothing. Caught up with him at the red light. And I was like, yo, fam, yo, you're going mad fast. And he thought I was giving him props for how fast he was going. And I was like, yo, fam, real talk. Yo, put on a helmet, bro. Put on a helmet, fam. Real talk, man. Safety first, bro. Put on that helmet, put on that breastplate, put on them elbow guards, yo. And he was like, yo, good looking out for letting me know, fam. I'm definitely do that. He knew what time it was. He knew God sent me to tell him that. He knew that. He said, I know. I know I, I need to put on my gear. You right. You right. And I was like, yo, ride safe. I'm out. And I was out. So that means the most high sent me there just to tell him that. You see, because I probably was used by God to save his life. He probably was supposed to die. And the most high is trying to sustain him by saying, look, put that helmet on. If you ride a motorcycle, don't ever ride a motorcycle with no helmet, bro. Don't ever. And I'm not. Listen, let me tell you something, guys. If you're riding a motorcycle and you got one of them dumb helmets on your head that just covers your top of your head, you know them silver helmets that dudes be wearing? It look like a hat. Don't ever wear that garbage. That's not a helmet. You wear a helmet, the helmet supposed to cover your whole face. Because when you fall off a motorcycle, you're going to hit your face first. There are people that crash on a motorcycle and broke their whole mouth, bro. All their teeth are gone. The whole bottom part of their mouth fractured, totally destroyed, bro. Don't let that happen to you. Wear your safety gear, bro. I don't care if it's summertime. You better put that helmet on. Buy a helmet that allows good airflow. Always wear your gear. Always, you always, it's just like when you're on the job, you got a job and it's dangerous or you got to do things and you got to be safety. You got to have safety first, wear your PPE, wear your PPE, personal protective equipment, wear it at all times. You understand? When I was, when I used to work at that agent agency in the heating department, I seen a guy burn his hand off. I seen a guy burn his face. I seen a guy get electrocuted. Why? Because he ain't put on his proper PPE. So he's busy touching wires and didn't even know. And he got electrocuted. There have been times I almost got electrocuted. You understand? But I had my tools with me. 
you know, those of you that are in the electrical field, you know, you have to have your your tester with you, your 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 electrical tester, um, the voltmeter and all that stuff. And I remember I was doing a, a particular job on a boiler and I was changing out some equipment on the boiler. And uh, for whatever reason, I shut off all the safety equipment. I shut off all the breaker boxes. I, I shut off all the main electrical power that goes to that boiler. And I was about to disconnect the wires, right? I was about to put the screwdrivers and everything on the, the terminals and all that other stuff. And the Most High said, son, grab your tester and just test to see if there's power coming through. Now, I figure, hey, I turned the breaker off. I'm good. But the Most High said, no, just because you turned the power off does not mean that the power is off. Fam, would you believe that when I put those two, you know how it is with the testers, you have the positive, you have the negative, the black and the, the, the red, and I put them on and I test it for, to see if it have 120. Fam, the, the, the boiler had full power, man. The electrical terminals was hot. It was hot. Come to find out, the breaker for that boiler was coming from another area, from another breaker box that was totally shut that we had to get a special key for. But we didn't have the key. Nobody had the key. So we had to break open the whole lock in order to get in it. Now, what if I would have put the, the screwdriver and touched those terminals? I would have been done. Matter of fact, that boiler wasn't 120 volts. I think that was 220. That was 200. And, that was the full volts. I would have been fried. But see, I followed the most high. I, I, prop, I use proper safety techniques. And any electrician will tell you, you're supposed to do that. It doesn't matter if you turn off the, uh, the, uh, the circuit breakers and all of that stuff. You still got to use your testers and make sure that nothing is hot. And also, you should wear the proper gloves. That's another thing, guys. You're supposed to wear the proper gloves when dealing with electrical work. Some more skilled and professionals, they don't, they be like, oh, I don't need all of that. But still, you need it. Unless you want to die. You know? So whatever job you have, there's always safety protocols. Follow all the safety things. That way you can stay alive. Stay alive. You know? Let's go. He is Monica's husband. He is Harlem's father. He is arguably one of the greatest musicians in the world. Greatest musician in the world. And I miss him. And I need him. I know I'm being selfish. Because there are so many people who he continues to impact their life. But I don't have my bro tonight. And I need him to fight. So I'm asking all of you, please say a prayer tonight for Sean Martin. I need Sean to fight. Harlem needs him to fight. Monica needs him to fight. Music needs him to fight. I mean, if you think about and this, believing, if you think about the way he's talking, if if that if it's the will of God for that man to stay alive, he's gonna stay alive. That's how you gotta see it. It's this is crazy, man. That's like almost like idol worship, like you worshiping this person. So you begging everybody else to pray for him as if though our prayers is going to reach heaven first, but your prayers don't. It doesn't make any sense, y'all. If you need prayer, pray for yourself, fam. If God don't hear your prayers, that means God and you don't have a relationship. Last time I checked, if you have a relationship with the Most High, he hears your prayers. 
You don't need nobody else to come in and, 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 and pray for you in order to get results. Pray for yourself. The reason why people don't is because they don't have confidence. Because they figure, well, I'm in, I'm in sin, I'm doing wrong, God is not going to hear me. Well, if he's not going to hear you, he's not going to hear me either. Not because I'm in sin, but if I'm praying for you when he don't rock with you, it ain't going to work. You know, because your fear is holding back God's hand. He's trying to help you, but you you don't believe in him. So, hey, it's nothing going to work for you anyway. You know, I'm just being honest. You know? Yeah, that's why I don't I don't like when other people pray because they be casting spells and, and now you got to cast out demons. This is why as a follower of the most high, you got to be rebuking spirits and casting out demons. And, um, you know, you, you got to do this for yourself because I know that there's a lot of witches and warlocks out there that try to pray evil things over me all the time. But none of those things work because I rep the most high. And, and also when they pray, their evil spells, it end up affecting their family members. The Most High put the curses on their family. You can't curse that which the Most High has blessed. A lot of people do that. A lot of sorcerers and warlocks out here, they be there with candles, incense burning, praying death over your life every day. Praying for you to fail, praying for you to die. There's some evil people in the world. But at the same time, if you rep the most high, he's going to shut all those people down. All the evildoers, he will shut them down one by one. So what Kirk need to do is he need to repent of his sins because to come online begging for prayers is a sign of him not being in the presence of God the way he know he's supposed to be. Because he's been a hypocrite all his life. Kirk Franklin do not serve God. We, we used to expose him many times back in the day. I used to expose Kirk Franklin all the time. You understand? All the time. When he used to wear the red lipstick. Remember the pictures with the pink, the pink lipstick, I mean. Remember those pictures back in the day? They still have them online. Let me see if I could pull one up. Because he used to have that all the time. Let me see. Uh, Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin pink lipstick. Let me see. Pink. I was I was pretty much one of the first, if not the first, that exposed it. Back in the day, it was like crazy. <laughs> this is crazy, man. Let me see if I could get this, man. This good. <laughs> it's like it brings back funny memories, fam. When you really watch those <laughs> images, man. <laughs> it's funny, man. Like, dude, really? <laughs> Yo, this is sad, man. <laughs> Yo, this is funny, man. Let me see if I can pull this into the video. Kirk used to have on lipstick, bro. Like, literally lipstick. <laughs> Check this out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, fam. I kid you not, man. <laughs> Yo, what the? What's going on, bro? <laughs> Yo, that's crazy, fam. What in the world is dude doing, bro? Dude wearing lipstick. Check this one out, fam. <laughs> This is sad, bro. <laughs> yo, it's crazy, man. Back in the that's that's Kirk from back in the day, yo. He used to wear that pink lipstick. We used to make videos about that type of stuff, man. But anyway, man. Closing remarks, fam. Get your life in order and repent of your sins. Clean up your diet. Make sure you eat in the proper foods. Make you make sure you tune into the content, fam, because a lot of y'all, y'all be hating on me when I speak this truth. Y'all be getting mad and I'm trying to guide you to the right path. 
You know what I'm saying? If you pay attention to these classes, you listen to these breakdowns, listen to this commentary, you're going to be a better person if you really want to be. You know? Kirk Franklin have an opportunity to repent, but he don't want to. He want to live in sin. He want to twerk. You know what I mean? We're going we're gonna to deal with that twerk video of his, too. Because he out of pocket. But um, he's busy work, focusing on working on an album rather than getting his life right with God. So uh, we're going to get up on out of here, do what we got to do. Um, we'll be back in the morning with more. I might go live again, but I'll most likely going to be on my other channel because I got to get content over there. I haven't been over there in a minute. And the thing with these channels, you have to maintain putting out content. You just can't be not posting for like two, three weeks. You can't do that. It messes up the algorithm. You have to continually be in consistent. And that's why with this platform, we've been consistent um, for a very long time. So appreciate everybody stopping by. Um, let me get a few shout outs. Uh, I'm not sure if I shouted these people out. I think I did, but I'll shout them out again. Shout out to Keneal for the 20. I believe I shouted you out earlier, but I'll do it again. Michael for the 10. <laughs> Hendrix for the 20. Michael Dwayne for the 5. Appreciate the support. Uh, let me see. Who's this? Knock for the $2 support. V Dub Man for the eighty dollars support. Appreciate the sponsoring of the shows. You know what I'm saying. Um, if you haven't already, consider clicking the like button if you enjoyed the commentary. Um, we're gonna be dealing with the Tyrese situation. It's gonna be like a longer live stream. We're gonna be dealing with that tomorrow. We're gonna be covering his videos and kind of break them down, see exactly what's going on because a lot of you guys. You got to pay attention to what wh where we are in today's day with this marriage situation. It's really bad. And uh, you guys need to be prepared for the future and uh, stop putting yourself in positions where women are taking advantage of you, especially taking your money and your resources. Um, um, there's no community channel. It's the community section, the community section. Um, a lot of people don't know how to use YouTube. Uh, YouTube have multiple sections that's on my platform. Like a platform consists of multiple sections. Um, you have the um, video section where videos are located, right? Hold on a second. Let me, because you have to go to the main page. You have to go to the main page. Hold on a second. You have to go to the main home page. On that page, you got the video section, shorts, live playlists and community those sections have all of my content a lot of times people are only in the live section because i go live all the time they don't check the video section to see if i uploaded a video they don't check the short section to see if i uploaded shorts they don't check the playlists and they definitely don't check the community section you have to check all of the sections so that you can know what i'm doing you know that's why i try to balance it all out you know so that being said we're going to be dealing with the tyrese situation um we're going to cover that one on camera in the in the morning or afternoon somewhere around there depending on how the situation is with me because i got a delivery that's coming in and i gotta make sure that i am available so uh we're gonna be covering that don't you just hate when apple release new products when you just finished buying one <laughs> the other day i had bought a new mac studio and now apple comes out with a new one but i i think i recall telling you guys that apple was going to come out with a new one i'm gonna get it eventually but i'm kind of still thinking about which one to get either another mac studio or the mac pro because they updated the mac pro and the mac pro now have the m2 uh, processors in it and a Mac Pro desktop is a beast you know you could put those cards in there graphics all that fancy stuff so 
man, it's a monster workhorse. So I'm really thinking about getting that. And once I get that, I'm good for the next 20 years. <laughs> Seriously. Because I, when it comes to having like a production computer for music, you want the best of the best, the most beefy monster computer you can possibly find. Wait a minute, did I say beefy? Pause, just in case. <laughs> Pause, just in case, fam. Just in case. About you want a beefy computer? Pause. Yeah, man, that new Mac Pro. Yeah, man. 129 gigs of RAM. Psh, four terabytes. I would put four terabytes, probably four to eight terabytes of... uh of uh, SSD in there because you want the computer to be like the base for all your stuff, man. I got a lot of sample libraries, a lot of stuff that I got to install. So I'm trying to have the perfect system just for the music. But the thing is, when you update to these newer Mac computers, man, it's different. When, when you do music, it's like your software, your apps, your plugins, all these things got to be compatible. And, and with Apple Silicon, it's kind of different, man. It's like, we're still waiting for everything to be updated to work with the M1. It's like, it's frustrating because certain things are not working. You got to open Rosetta to use everything. It's just, I don't, I can't stand all of that stuff, man. I just need a system to work. This is why a lot of times when people have production systems, they never update. They never update their computers. They just keep the same old system because if it's working good, don't ever change it. Don't ever update. Don't go to the next, uh, operating system because it'll throw off all your equipment man all your apps so it'll make everything stop working and you'll be pissed bro i hate that stuff so once i build up the new system because i already done like i said i bought a new mac studio for music and it's perfectly fine i could use it for music but the thing is i i want a system that could get me through the next 10 years you get what i'm saying because when you have a mac pro that computer will literally get you through 10 years of production value. It's not always about buying the latest and greatest. It's just that my primary computer that I wanted was a Mac Pro. Every production studio that's pro level have a Mac Pro or a high-end Windows computer. But in music production, most every, mostly everybody use a, a Mac system. I, I only use predominantly Mac computers. I never owned a Windows PC. Even though they make the best gaming systems, um, with this new Mac Pro, uh, you're going to have people trying to buy that for gaming, but I wouldn't buy it for gaming. You know what I mean? It's for m music, and uh, that's pretty much it. And video production, if you're doing, like, movies and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, man, we'll be back in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it is what it is. I hope everybody... Have a blessed day wherever you are. Be safe when driving. Wear your seatbelt. Um, you know what I mean? Just follow the rules, man. Be safe out there, fam. Always remember, you're in control of your life right now. You know? So you got to maintain it. It's just like, you know, if you got kids and you're walking down the street, you got to make sure you're holding their hand. Especially if you're crossing the street. Always hold your kid's hand. Don't let your kids just walk off and do things on their own i see parents doing stuff like that fam you got your kids running in front of you they're just walking doing their thing don't do that type of stuff always let your children hold your hand let them be trained to understand hold your hand because a car could jump the sidewalk while they playing and then they get killed because of you if you would have had them in your hand you could have snatched them out of the way that's what holding hands is very important you know Everybody, if you got three kids, four kids, everybody supposed to hold each other's hands while you cross in the street, while you walking in the park. Always let them hold hands. Very important. I don't know who that's for, but somebody here neglect doing that. You need to do that. So y'all be safe out there. Ringo TV reactions. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel for the best reactionary content on YouTube, hands down. We'll be back in the morning, later on, possibly, on my Ringo TV Raw channel. I'm out. Peace. If you like our content, 
Consider supporting via Cash App at dollar sign Ringo TV Raw. Become a patron on Patreon.com for exclusive video content not shown on YouTube. You could also support through PayPal at paypal.me slash Ringo TV Raw. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new content. Follow me on Instagram at Ringo TV Raw. This is Ringo TV Reactions. The only channel on YouTube bringing you the truth 100% raw and uncut. I'm out. Peace.